Jesus, Mero, great to see both of you. I feel like we're in the Showtime world because you both have the exact same background that you use <laughs> on your show. I appreciate that. And I'm starting this interview with a Garrett Cole type fastball. So I'm coming in with the high heat ooh, on you guys. Ooh, let's, go. Okay. let's go. Let's go. Which one Call of me, you Higgy. is funnier? Oh. Which one of us? Ah, trick question. Oh. Ah, trick very question. question. Ah. It depends on who ah. you ask. I have mastered the art of the dad joke. You know what I'm saying? As sure. I have for progeny. Progeny? Mm -hmm. You know what progeny. I'm saying? But, uh, you know, there's, it's apples and oranges. Like, we're, we yeah. have very similar humor, but there's certain sections where we kind of deviate. Jesus is really good with, like, deep, deep references. That, like, it takes me, like, a beat, and I'm just like, oh, yes! K and Ali, the sitcom from 1986. Mm -hmm. That ran for two seasons. Mm -hmm. That's what we're talking about. You know what I mean? So there's, you know, there's, uh, there's we're, we're not congruent. We're similar. For all my math nerds out there. You know what? I'll take it a step <laughs> further. Let's use some wash Yankee references. We're not different. It's just different. T it's different types of humor, but at the end of the day, it's the same situation. It's like, let's go back. It's like the difference between bringing in Jabba Chamberlain versus bringing in David Robertson. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's, there's different uses. There's different depending on who's a batter. But it's not a matter of who's funnier. I think it's the chemistry when you get the two of us together. That's what yeah. people really like. That's when you get you get a little bit of both. You get a little sugar and salt at the same time, like peanut butter on pretzels. Oh, yeah. I'm glad Ooh. you said that because that's one of my next questions. And I'm mm -hmm. going to ask you guys to compliment yourselves. But why does this collaboration work? Why, when you two guys sit down together, does the hilarity just ensue? Because it's, it's natural. Yeah, it's natural. Yeah. It's from the Bronx. If, if literally we did not have this show and we were hanging out at the McDonald's across the street from Yankee Stadium, the yep. jokes would be a little darker, <laughs> but they'd be about the same. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's, it's not, it wasn't brought together in a corporate boardroom. It's two guys who love the same stuff, got a similar background and just enjoy, just enthusiastic about life. And we're taking yeah. the viewers on a ride with us because everything we experience we're experienced pretty much for the first time. So the viewers yes. are experiencing it for the first time as well. Cause we meet people, for example, we'll go to award shows and we'll meet other celebrities. Like the whole time we're like, yo, look at that celebrity. Look at that celebrity. That and then someone will come over and be like, yeah, you guys are celebrities too. Like this is a work event. I need you to calm down. And then you'll talk to other celebrities are like, I hate going to award shows. Cause it's just more business. And we're just like, what? sign us up for as many. <laughs> like, we're like, we go into this and we get a free swag bag. Let's what? go. I get a free iPhone and a and free food and like I get to hang out with Tay Diggs. Like sign Let's me go. up. <laughs> you just referred to yourselves as celebrities, which you are. But when you started the Bodega Boys podcast, what's the goal? What's the aspiration? Where are you guys thinking you're going to be able to take that? Just have fun. It was fun. It's fun. funny. Yeah, yeah. In the beginning, when we when we first went to Complex, it was just kind of like you know a little side, a little side yeah. money. You know what I mean? Which was nice. Which was great because you know we are working class dudes, you know what I mean? So in that time, it was that little 250 bucks extra a week really made a difference, you know what I mean? Hold on, wait, wait, was, you got 250? Uh, uh, I mean, uh, well, 50 <laughs> bucks a week uh, was... <laughs> <laughs> nah, you know what, we just went in blind. We didn't even know yeah. really what a podcast was. And then we did it and people just loved it. And it wasn't like, okay, TV show next. We were just like, all right, I guess we were a little happy. We were like, I guess we could just do this podcast for the rest of our lives. And next thing you know, shout out to uh, DJ A-Track, our homeboy. He had us host Fool's Gold Day Off in Brooklyn. So yeah. now we're hosting an eight-hour mega concert with all these rap stars. We have no stage experience. We go up there. We <laughs> kill it. And after that, people were just like, yo, the world is kind of your oyster. And after that, we just ran with it. Yeah. I've asked numerous baseball players this question, and I'm going to ask it to you guys from a comedy perspective. When did you know you were a lot funnier than the average person? Ooh. Uh, I, I had a feeling when I was like around seven or eight, just because I could make my uncles and my dad laugh. Like my dad would call me and like, I was like the you know, like Rodney Dangerfield, like, yo, come up, come up, come on, coming up next on the stage, we got Little Marrow. And I would go up there and do impressions on my uncles and like my family members. And he, like everybody would just be in stitches. So I'm just like, okay, maybe this is, you know, and my brother, and then when they call my brother and then come to do it, and he was just like, ah, you know what I mean? And my sister was even worse. So, you know, shout out to you, Ingrid, I love you, but you guys are not as funny as me. 
I used to do security for nightclubs way back in like the early 2000s. And what that would entail was maybe six or seven hours just standing in front of a building, just alone, no one else is out there. But every now and then someone, because of New York had the, the recently passed smoking laws, people would come outside to smoke. So basically I'd have to do a tight five just to pass the time with this person I don't know. And it's just like, you're talking to them, you're finding out, you're like, okay, what brings you to the nightclub? Or like, you're joking, you're like, those will kill you. And they're like, yeah, I know, or whatever. But just interacting with people like that and just their reaction, they're like, wow, you're really funny. And I was like, yeah, whatever, whatever. They're like, and they would always be like, you should try stand up, you should do something. And I was like, you know what? Let's see where this nightclub stuff goes. And well, you see, I made a better decision. <laughs> you both have roots in the Bronx. Yes. Mm -hmm. When and where is that Yankee fandom born? Is is it from the crib until now that you guys are both Yankee fans? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it, absolutely, it's from the crib. But I really be like, I went from like, not casual, but just like I'm from the Bronx. I'm a Yankee fan to like I'm watching. I'm looking at ERAs. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at um, base percentages. In in '96, Derek Jeter's rookie year. World Series that really mm. like cemented it that stamped it for me like this is my squad forever like I'm not gonna be one of those kids that's like oh they got this guy they got that guy so I'm a fan of like the Angels now because they have Mike Trout like no I will right. never switch my allegiances the Yankees could go Definitely. 0 for 160,000 and I'm still <laughs> a Yankee fan. Yeah, it's like one of those weird things where people are just like, oh, if you're a Yankee fan, you're a front runner because like you like the Yankees, the Cowboys and the Lakers. And I was like, I'm actually from the Bronx. Like I'm allowed <laughs> yes. to like the Yankees. And my first experience liking the Yankees was because when my parents came in from Jamaica, my mother loved Don Mattingly. And just she would always just watch back when the games were on. Let's date ourselves here. WPIX, who had the uh, <laughs> World Trade Center, rest in peace, as its logo. Yes. And after Yankee games came on the Honeymooners. But my mother will watch that and just, I would just sit there watching it with her. And then she'd get the, the um, she got me the onesie, the Don Manley onesie, which I still have. And it was such a weird time in New York. The Yankees were not the most popular team at the time. People really loved the Mets. And I think CBS owned the Yankees. And it was just like kind of a mess. And they were signing players. But that whole time, I always was just like a Yankee fan. I remember my father would come home with Mets tickets to go to Shea Stadium. And I'd be upset. And I'm like, Yankee, Yankee Stadium is literally across the street. Why are we going all the way to see the Mets? <laughs> so I've just been a Yankee fan like that. And then it got even worse when I moved out on my own in like around 09. My day would start with me logging on to Yankee blogs, then immediately logging on to Red Sox blogs to see what they were up to, and then yep. checking the weather, and then checking the email. <laughs> just living and dying. Just my my TV's on Yes Network all day. It's on in the background. Every, they're, if they're talking about sports money, no matter what they're talking about, I'm just listening, just taking in the stats. Can't even enjoy the game because I got the ERAs. My girlfriend's making fan graphs. It was a, it was a dark time, but 09, listen, listen. worth it. Worth it. <laughs> you know, your your audio cut out there for a second. Where did you oh. say your TV is on all the time? What what station is it oh, on for baseball? On yes, on the Yes Network, which yes, is right. Listen, as we home said, of the Yankees. Camera, home of the Yankees, and one of the most amazing stations ever. If you are a Yankee fan and you hear your name on the Yes Network, you have to you take this. You you made it. You stop and you're just like whoa, <laughs> whoa. Okay, That's as I fight. said before, we interviewed Obama. All right, former president. I get it. You got a retweet cool. from the Yes Network social media or even a Yes Network mention or yeah. the time they showed the Jesus and Mero ad on the Yes Network. You see people on Twitter like, hey, I love those guys. And you're like, hey, thank you, Vito yeah. Yankee 411. Thank you. Thank you, Joe from Staten Island. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> well, the the feeling it. is mutual. And not that you ever had to prove any of your street cred, but the Don Mattingly onesie story, that, that, that's a winner. T tell that thank story you. every time. Every but, time. but I wanted to ask you guys about your show, and I, I even see it right now. In terms of your wardrobe, you guys are almost always making sure you, you, you're, you're rocking some Yankee gear, whether it's a mm -hmm. sweatshirt or the cap or whatever. So yeah. you're making sure that you're representing the Yankees, even as you're doing your own show. All Listen, the time. Our shout out to Satra San, our stylist. And she knows the only teams you could possibly bring us are the Knicks, the Yankees, the Giants. I believe the, you are right with the Rangers? Yes, the Rangers. Okay. Yes. And that, the Rangers. But, and no, so that no, I, I moved to Jersey. I'm not a doubles fan. 
<laughs> yeah, so, um, but no, we like Yankee, and then Yankees, Yankee hats go with everything. So we, we like, if you look at our hat collection, we literally have the Yankee hat in every color, oh, man. every material. I have yeah. one with wool flaps for, I guess, winter games if those ever happen. We're ready. Yeah, Jack, we got Yankee hats that would make old school Yankee fans mad. Like, yes. the, the Yankee hat should not be fuchsia covered in flowers. It should not exist. I'm like, it's limited edition. It's limited edition. Come what do you on. want? It's for, Key, it's for Key and Godwin's birthday. Come on. It's for my Daryl Strawberry Valentine's Day throwback jersey. Now, Mero, you mentioned 96, and I got to imagine that might be the answer to this question. Do you guys have signature moments in your life as a Yankee fan that when oh. you're thinking back, this stands out? Mm. The entire 96 series – Going against the Braves, you know, Glavin, Smoltz, Maddox, you know what I mean? Like, that, that team was a, was a juggernaut. And losing the first two at home, thinking like, oh, man, this is all over. They're going to Atlanta. If they drop one in Atlanta, this is all over. And then, and then they come back. And then Derek Jeter obviously has the, you know, the infamous, or not infamous, famous spin yeah. throw, you know? And then I, I, for some reason, I vividly remember Wade Boggs almost getting impaled by a broken bat. That like somehow oh, altered yeah. the course of that game, and I was just like, "No!" I was like, "If that bat doesn't hit him in the thigh, this guy's out, and we win this game." And like all these little, and that's why I say like it, that stamped me as like a real like I'm watching the game as opposed to just sitting on the couch with my dad being like, "Yay!" Anytime the Yankees score. How about hey, you, Deesis? What stands out for you when you're a Yankee? There's fan so many. There's so many, and I, they're not all good. Like I was actually there for when Jabba Chamberlain his first starting pitching start which didn't go well, but it was cool to be there. You know, just a real Yankee experience. But my favorite would be Derek Jeter in 2011, his 3,000th hit, because uh, my girlfriend at the time was like, I'm going to get good tickets. And I was just like, all right, I guess we're going like Lodge or Mezzanine. She got like five rows behind home plate. So if you watch the Yankee Yes Network rebroadcast, you can see us on certain camera shots. And then Jeter just did what he did. Like I was expecting, you know, like one, maybe two, come on. Jeter gave yeah. you a completely magical day. It was just yeah. one of those. It was one of those days where at the end of the game, you're just sitting there. They played New York, New York. You don't want to leave the stadium, and they have to come tell you you got to leave. And you got tears in your eyes. Like I love this place. I love this yeah. place. Wow. I was at that game too, and I was there with my first son. It was like a Father's Day gift. And if you remember, like Derek Jeter was like on the hunt for three thousand, and then the game mm -hmm. before that game got rained out. So I had tickets to the game that got rained out, and the makeup game is where he made the 3,000th hit. And it was a homer. I was like, you yeah. can't write this stuff. You know what That's I mean? It. So I got my brand new baby. I'm like, yeah! I almost <laughs> drop him off the, like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm the... I'm, and yeah, I'm Rick going Jeter. Bonkers. Yeah. Come on. The, it's, of, it's muscle memory now. I was in the studio that day for the S Network, and I have to say I'm jealous of you guys and anyone else because as much as we can simulate the game from the studio to oh, see man. what Jeter did. And I had covered him since his rookie year. I had written a yeah. book with him. So that was a game where I, I lament not having the ability to be there. And I remember Michael Kay's call, history with an exclamation point. Uh -huh. And I yeah. subsequently said to him, did you have that in your holster? Were you, were you ready to go with that? And he said, no, it, it just came. Wow. Like yeah. I yeah, always thought he had that prepared. It was so perfectly timed, and it was wonderful. Yeah, I was like, is this is, is, is this a Disney movie? Because it's like, you know what I mean? Like, it's it's too perfect. You know what I mean? Like, oh, man. I, like, I, and I got tinnitus from the, from the arena leaving there. It was like. Because it was so loud. Like, the building was shaking. It was nuts. So a couple of years ago, MLB Network hired you guys or, or let you guys be their reporters for the day. You're yeah. at Yankee Stadium. I know mm -hmm. you interviewed Aaron Judge. You interviewed Cameron Mabin. For two kids from the Bronx who have that passion that you guys have, what was that experience like? Oh, Bro, that man. was Getting that, on the this, field. Just getting yeah, on the field. Is, like walking into, like, the Vatican. I was yeah. just like, oh, 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 oh. Not even I did, like, exactly, a 20-minute like, selfie video. Like, you kind of feel like, you, the, you, like you're tear, you tear up a little. Because when you just realize, like, you've always been seen it from the stands, and now you're on the actual field. And I remember we played in CC Sabathia's charity uh, softball game. Softball game we yeah. met Mariano Rivera. We met Aaron Judge. Like, even to this day, I look at those photos, and I'm like, no way this happened. Being interviewed on the field, players know who you are. They're coming up to you. Like, they're like, we love the show. And even that, that takes you to a next level. And then when we're actually doing the interviews, the fans in the stands see us, and we're like, you're – and then, like, 
the people in the stadium answer back with a year. It is all these Yankee fans know us and rock with us. That, like I said, you have these moments Man. where you're just like, okay, I'm on TV, I'm a celebrity, quote unquote. But then you have moments as a New Yorker, as a Bronx resident, where you're like, yo, we are doing something special. Listen, so wild. Like, Jesus is saying, it was bananas. Everybody who's anybody in the Yankee universe was there. Like, I had Brett Gardner. Gardner came up to me and was just like, hey, don't embarrass yourself out there. I was yeah. just like, yes, yes. I was like, oh, Gardy B, I love you. We're yelling at Brian Cashman. We're like, our guy, our guy, the Cashman. You're... And he's just looking at us like, I, I don't know who they are. I have no, I I have they have are, no idea who you are. Thank you for the enthusiasm. So there was one moment where Ken Rosenthal from MLB Network was by the batting cage. And you mm -hmm. guys started calling him Bob Lorenz, who, who Bob was Lorenz! a colleague at the S Network. So yes. what, what was behind all that, that joke? It wasn't even a joke. We literally were confused. We literally, it happens all the time. It's usually my fault. I mix up people's names and it's too, it's too fast for um, Meryl to correct me. Because sometimes I just get, you get so excited. You're like, oh, it's such and such from the S Network. Yeah. Yeah, it's Ken Rosenthal. And he's like, no, 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 that's not this person. Oh, no, get it together. Yeah. Get it together. And I'm like, Ken Rosenthal. No, Ken Singleton. Like, no, work it out. <laughs> I it's funny because in my brain he's all, he's Kenny Bowtie, so I was gonna be like, "Hey, Kenny Bowtie!" And then when he called <laughs> when he called him Bob Lorenz, I was like, "Oh no, 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 Meryl, you're wrong. It's Bob Lorenz. It's Bob Lorenz." <laughs> but see, anytime we do that, that's not like that's not as insulting someone. That's just that's actually a compliment because that means we know of the person that we named. We just yeah. didn't use it correctly. So <laughs> sorry, I, I Bob will Lorenz. Be explaining that to Bob when I see him tomorrow because we did have some fun with that. We played that clip in his office and we laughed. I, I wanted to get back to, to your show though. You mentioned your your interview list. You've interviewed a former president in Barack Obama. Mm -hmm. You interviewed a man who became a president in Joe Biden. You've had Chris Rock. You've had Eddie Murphy. What has been some of your most rewarding interviews? Ooh, good question. That's a good question. I feel like the magnitude of the guest matters, like with Obama, obviously, with Joe Biden, obviously. But the best thing about it is that we get to, like, kind of humanize them, right? Like, they go mm -hmm. around on these press tours and they have, like, these kind of canned answers. And you as a sports journalist, you know, like, because athletes do it the most. Like, they're just like, I'm just trying to help the team, you know, one day mm -hmm. at a time, uh, just trying to find, you know, just trying to wait for the right pitch, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's all these, like, very canned, cliche answers. When we interview them and we get off the cuff stuff, that's so satisfying. And it's yeah. just like, you know, I can't I can't name a single person because like doing that with Obama, doing that with Dave Letterman, doing that with Eddie Murphy, you know, just having human conversations with people, you know, that are like that you see as like kind of almost like deities, you know, in a way yeah. is, is super dope. And you take something special away from every interview. But I think one of the probably one of the most important interviews we did was at the beginning of the pandemic. We had Dr. Fauci on. And yep. it was different because he wasn't able to talk freely uh, on the daily briefings, but he came on, it humanized him. It made him seem like more than just Dr. Fauci. You found out yeah. that he's a guy from Brooklyn. He watches baseball. And it introduced him to an audience that probably would not even hear about him because like, some of our audiences not watch the news whatsoever. So he got on there. He's explaining, uh, you know, just COVID at the time when we knew nothing. And I remember... A neighbor of mine said, thank you for having him on because he explained the difference between allergies and COVID, which at the time we didn't know. We thought anything could be COVID. So just little things like those little nuggets we took away from every interview, just so much fun. But also the David Letterman was just an amazing interview. The hair on your arms was up the whole time. Like you are talking yeah. to a legend right now and he's giving you high praise. Well, his respect for you in that interview was at a high level too. And he congratulated you guys for what you were doing. And I could just see the the mutual admiration be, between both sides of you. I think he even said he was jealous of you guys because yes. I, I'm a big Letterman fan. And, and you could see that Letterman would go right to the edge sometimes where mm -hmm. he might not, he might want to give a guest a little more grief. And he said, I'm jealous because you guys just are able to tell it like it is. <laughs> yeah, and that's high yeah. praise because we all grew up with Letterman. I remember, you know, going to the library and taking out the best of the top 10 lists or just seeing, yeah. watching him and waiting for him to do those jokes or his monologue. So then for him to say, not only does he enjoy what we're doing, but he wishes he had the freedom to do that. And you just imagine what his version of our show would be like. It's just another mind blowing interview. It's funny because like he had an impact on us. And then what like we're, re we're retelling like stories of stuff because, you know, I didn't have cable growing up in the Bronx. You know what I mean? Like 
David Letterman was like it at night. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, but it just so happened to be great. And I was just like, I was a graffiti kid in the in the nineties. You know what I mean? And he did like graffiti on the front of his desk one time. And I was like, yo, you know that made that legitimized me doing graffiti to me in my brain because David Letterman did it. You know what I mean? And he was just like, I don't remember doing that. I was like, I do. <laughs> Hey, uh, before I let you go, a couple quick more questions. I wanted to play a quick game with you. And I played this yes. with Paul O'Neill, but I'm going to pattern Ooh. it to who you the guys warrior. are. warrior. Yes. So O'Neill and I both love music. So mm-hmm. I asked O'Neill, if I gave him a baseball player, tell me who that person would be in the music world. So okay. when I asked him Ooh. Derek Jeter, he went Will Smith and uh, Justin Timberlake. When I asked him Mariano Rivera, he went Bob Marley. But I want to do this baseball to comedy with you guys. Ooh, if I okay. said, who would CC Sabathia, a future Hall of Famer, a leader, a guy who's got diverse talents, who would he be in the comedy world? Who would you guys latch on to? Ooh, I would, would say, be? I would say, I would say Eddie Murphy, because it's a guy who's had longevity, had success, mm-hmm. had extreme success but consistent success. You know what I mean? Yes. And no matter, even, even in the down years, he's still Eddie Murphy. You know what I mean? He put the work and, in. Yeah. yeah. That's high praise, but we have high praise. We personally know CC, but even yeah. just watching him, what he did for the Yankees and what he was doing in Cleveland and just how he used to throw teams on his back and just leave it all out there on the mound. That's what you want from a comedian. You want at the end of a show, your cheeks hurt from laughing so much. Yep. And he, he gave you that every time yep. he got on the mound. Listen, that game against the A's, man, he, and him literally throwing his arm off his body in his last, you know what I mean, couple mm-hmm. of pitches in there, like, you could tell, like, he really, wa- like, he really, he's a warrior, man. Like, he really wanted it all the time. And that's what you want in a, in a guy that's playing for your team. Now, one more. Let's flip it and go in the other direction. Who would Dave Chappelle be in Ooh. the Major League Baseball world? Ooh, who would Dave Chappelle Ooh. be? That Dave is a good question. Chappelle. Dave Chappelle. Mm. Okay, so he's talented longevity active or that's a great question because i'm going to cheat a little here i already have mm-hmm. one i think dave Chappelle. i think roberto clemente a guy who Ooh. is just up there on a mountain a guy who yeah. spoke his mind a guy mm-hmm. who was different than anybody else that you just wanted to laser in on now i know that that might be a little bit before your error but i i think dave Chappelle. Oh. i think clemente I, uh, my, listen, my dad was a huge Clemente guy. I got to throw back Clemente in the, in the closet. He was also a big Tony Pena guy. But I would say Suzuki because he Ooh. rarely misses. He rarely misses. You know what I mean? Jesus, like, Mero's good at this game. He's good at this. He's good at this. I like his <laughs> answers. I'm, I'm trying to, like, I don't want to, like, pigeonhole him because I really want to just get, like, the right answer. I don't want to say Derek Jeter. That seems, like, too simple. Hmm. You know what? I'm going to say Bernie Williams. I Bernie like Williams, it. because Bernie Williams, he wasn't the flashiest player, but when he had to, he made it happen. And Dave Chappelle, that's his style. He doesn't come on like, rah, 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 rah. Dave Chappelle has a conversation with you, and then he'll point something out, and he's not like, hardy, ha, 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 gives you the mic and waits for you to laugh. He just waits, and you process the thought, and you're like, wow, yeah, you're right. Whoa, I never ah! thought about that. <laughs> It's just like that. Also, because I love Bernie Williams, because he used to, you know, play the bass. No jazz guitar. Oh, well, hey. Oh, hey <laughs> Your show is on Showtime, Desus and Mero. You've had wonderful yeah. success. You're still a young men. What, what, what's left? What, what's on the list of things you still want to accomplish? Oh, man. Wow. Uh, maybe so many things. retire to the Dominican Republic and run the Yankees, uh, you know, Academy out there. Your academy? You know, you want, you, I would you love want, it. I would love it. Shout out to Brian Cashman. That's that's you your know future. That's Yo, what you want to do. Brian Cashman, send me out there. Send me back home, baby. You know what I'm saying? Even, like I'll go out there. I'll find you the next. Uh, you know, I'll find you the next Jason Dominguez. Sign me Even up. better, watch, watch. <laughs> Keep your eye out on the Yankees. Uh, field team we might be there one day doing ymca you won't know the difference it's gonna be us i like i like that i like that sneak there. in there now before i know i have to finish with the baseball question uh-huh. i need a prediction from you guys i want a team prediction for 2021 which is easy but i also uh-huh. want you to tell me something that you think might happen with a yankee player the rest of the way okay you know the team prediction already you know come on come on yankees all day 27 rings bro but uh, something's going to happen. Ooh. I'm trying to think. I believe Go that for the it. Yankees will make it to the ALCS. They'll pick somebody up, 
you know, get uh, the pitching in order and make it happen. Or somebody's going to break out. It's either going to be Domingo, it's going to be Davey. One of them is going to break out. And I predict, I predict this at the beginning of the season, and I feel feel like, you know, it hasn't come to fruition yet. Post-All-Star break, Gary Sanchez is going to go on a tear. I love Higgy. Love what he's doing. Okay. Love him catching Cole. Stay right there. You're doing your thing. But Gary is one of a kind. Don't sleep on him. He's in a bad slump. You know what I mean? A lot of people say he's in a bad couple of seasons, but I still believe in him. I think it's early, but I think this uh, Yankee fan base is going to be introduced to a little thing called a pennant race. I think it's going to be hot and furious. And I think it's going to be one of those weird ones where the Yankees win, but they win it while the game is on. And the Yes Network is like, hey, they won the pennant. And they don't really get to celebrate. Yeah. And all the Yankees fans are, all the Yankees yeah. afterwards are like, you know what? We're not celebrating yet. The job is not done. We're going to yeah. continue and we will celebrate when we get a trophy. And I'm like, <laughs> yes. That's how you play <laughs> baseball. Oh, the Orioles beat the Red Sox. So the Yankees are your pennant. And you're like, okay. Exactly. Right. Mathematically fourth. limited. You're like, okay. Uh, okay. Top of the fourth. All right. Cool. No doubt. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, guys, this has been so much fun. I knew I would laugh my way through this interview, and I I love your passion for what you do. I also love your passion for baseball, and maybe down the line we can all catch a baseball game together, and uh, that would be a lot of fun. Absolutely. Let's do it. Thanks for having us on. Thank you, Jack, and the Yes Network. Oh, Yo, Jackie and the Yes Network. (laughs) Yes, we love you guys. It's going to be weird if we actually go to a baseball game in person, though, because I feel like like I'm trying to probably touch you. To, like, to see like if you're real, a, right? Yeah, like, are you are you just on my TV? <laughs> I will not be wearing a tie, so there will be it'll be a different outfit. It'll be something like this. Nice, All right, nice. Look casual. Cash. Love it. Thanks again, guys. Thank, Thank you. you.